What's up guys? Welcome back to the Classic Car Maintenance Channel. In today's video, we're going to review the Kiwitz KVB01 Battery Tester. Okay, so first impression, it's nicely packaged in a good looking box. Looks promising. Let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. When you open it, the first item you encounter is the transport bag, which will, normally, contain the tester. And further in the box is the instructions manual. It comes in seven languages and tells you everything you need to know, although it should be pretty self-explanatory to use this tester. All right, let's open up the transport bag and see what's inside. Okay, so when you zip it open, you can immediately see the nicely stored tester and cables. It's held firmly in place by a Velcro. I like that. Let's look at the clamps first. The clamps feel sturdy, which is nice, so they don't come off while testing. Also very important, the clamps are made from copper and have teeth for extra grip. Yep, feels good if you ask me. What really stands out here, as you can see, is that the cable is super long compared to a lot of other testers. This one is 6 feet 6 inches or 2 meter long, which allows you to do the charging and cranking test by yourself, as you can connect the clamps to the battery and take the tester with you inside the vehicle. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's look at the actual tester. The cables are fixed to the tester and feel sturdy. Of course, there's a nice little protector on the screen as well, but we're going to leave it on to keep the screen scratch free for longer. There's six easy to read buttons and they give good feedback with a clicky sound. The casing itself feels solid and seems to provide nice protection. And when we look at the back, there's a convenient little table as an indication for the amount of CCA different sized engines normally need. Yeah, overall looks good. Now let's put it to the test. For our test setup, we have four batteries in different stages of their life, ranging from dead to almost perfect condition. This one is pretty new and still works like new. And as you can see, indicated by the green light, charges fully. The second one is our backup battery and is a few years old but still works great, holds its voltage and has enough power to crank a car. And as you can see, also charges to 100%. The most interesting test case out of the bunch is this one and is an old and bad battery. Because although it can hold its voltage and charges normally, as shown by our charger, it does not have enough power to crank a car anymore. And the final one is more than 10 years old and completely dead. It does not even charge properly anymore, although it has been hooked up to the charger for a couple of days now. Visually, you can see that it is bulging, and when you touch the battery, it feels a lot warmer compared to the other batteries, which is never a good sign. That's it for our test setup. Now let's see how well the battery tester performs. First, we're going to test the batteries with a multimeter, what you normally would do to check if the battery is okay or not. The first one reads 12.97 volts, which is perfect and was expected of the newest battery. The second one, as you can see, also gives a great reading, 12.97 volts. The third one gives a fake healthy reading of 13.59 volts, which would make you think that it is a perfectly healthy battery, but we know it isn't. And then the final one, as expected, gives a terrible reading of only 8.21 volts. Now let's see what the battery tester has to say about these four batteries. When hooking up the battery tester, it will automatically display the voltage it detects without having to do anything. And as you can see, this corresponds to the voltage measured with our multimeter. To perform the battery test, you hook up the tester to the battery, select the right voltage, and then the type of test you want to perform. After selecting the battery test, you indicate the type of battery, the standard to which the amps are rated, and finally the amount of amps indicated on the battery. When you've entered all the parameters, you just press enter and the device will do the rest. After calculating for a few seconds, the tester will show you the state of charge, the state of health, the voltage, the amount of amps available, and the internal resistance. And if you don't know what all of that means, it will also tell you if the battery is good or needs to be replaced. As expected, this is a good battery. The state of charge and health are both at 100%. The voltage is good, and the amps are close to the amount indicated on the battery. It also has low internal resistance, which is an important indicator for a battery's health. Now we just repeat the process for the other batteries. Select the test, enter the parameters, and let the device do its magic. Once done calculating, you can see that the battery tester once again correctly indicates that it is a good battery, although not as healthy as the newer one. 
Now, the next battery is going to be the real test to see if this device can filter out a bad battery that manages to maintain its voltage. Once again, select the battery test, change the parameters, and let it perform its test. As you can hear, the device sounds an alarm indicating that it is a bad battery and needs to be replaced. Although the state of charge is at 87%, the state of health is only at 19%. The battery only has 160 amps of the original 360 available and has a high internal resistance. So this device isn't fooled by a good voltage reading and correctly detects a bad battery. And finally, we have the completely dead battery. Although it appears to be able to perform the test, when you press enter after the last parameters, the device displays the message that the battery needs to be retested after charging. Because this battery tester uses the power from the battery to do its tests, it fails to test really low batteries. More expensive battery testers have an internal power source allowing them to test every battery. But usually when a battery is this low, it is beyond salvation anyway. Another great feature of this device is its ability to store multiple results. Just perform the test, like normal, and afterwards press the save button. It stays saved after turning the device off. To view the data, just press the Save button and you'll be able to view all the results you have stored. You can also easily change the language by pressing the bottom left button and selecting one of seven languages. For the final test, we're going to compare the results from the battery tester to an old school load tester. The first one gives the same results, a nice and healthy battery. The second battery also corresponds to the battery tester results and is once again correctly indicated as a healthy battery. The third battery should normally fail the load test, but as we can see, it's right on the edge of good and bad. So with the extra info from other tests like internal resistance, the battery tester manages to give a more accurate conclusion than the load tester. And the last battery immediately falls flat during the load test as expected. For the final test, we're going to test the battery in our 98 Jeep Wrangler and then do the cranking, loading, and charging test. Let's see how it goes. The multimeter indicates that it is a healthy, fully charged battery. From experience, we know that it also has no problem cranking our car. But let's see what the battery tester tells us. You get the drill by now. Just enter the parameters and start the test. Looks good. A normal, healthy battery. Now let's do the cranking test. This is where a big advantage of this battery tester comes into play. It's super long cable. You can take it all the way inside with you so you don't need anyone else to help you perform this test like some other battery testers. To perform this test, just go back to the main menu and select the cranking test. After selecting this test, it tells you to start the engine. Immediately after doing so, the battery tester gives the results. Once again, the battery tests normal and has enough power to crank the engine. All these tests are really simple to perform. Just follow the instructions on the screen and that's it. The next test is the load test. For this test, we have to put a load on the battery and then increase the RPM to 2000 to 2500. To do so, we're going to turn on the lights and rear window defogger. Increase the RPM and then press enter. That's it. Once again, a normal result so the alternator is strong enough to perform under load. And finally, we have the charging test. Once again, the instructions are nice and clear. We just have to start the engine and increase the RPM to between 2,500 and 3,000 RPM and then press enter. Nothing more to it. Simple instructions and fast results. The dynamic, maximum, and minimum voltage are displayed, followed by a conclusion. Our battery is charging so we know our alternator works. As a final check, we're once again going to test the battery with an old school load tester to see if the results correspond with the battery tester. And as expected, the battery passes the test. The Kiweeds KVB01 is a nice, affordable battery tester that gives a more accurate result than just using a multimeter or load tester. It is simple to use and easy to read. The rugged casing gives it a quality feel and the super long cable with sturdy clamps allows you to perform the tests by yourself. The only small downside is that this device does not perform a ripple test as part of the charging and load test like some other battery testers, as this test can tell a lot about the alternator's health. But all in all, it's a great device. 
So if you're looking for an affordable battery tester that can prevent you from getting stranded on the side of the road due to a bad battery or failing charging system, then this might be the one for you. Thanks for watching. If you liked our video, please consider liking and subscribing. More videos are on the way, so we'll see you on the next one.